I am like mosaic art. When I was younger, I had an odd infatuation with conforming myself to a certain stereotype. Growing up, I went through awkward phases of many cliche stereotypes, coordinating my every trait and characteristic to whatever it was I desired to be, all in an attempt to find comfort and belonging. After many disastrous results, I eventually came to the realization that there was no need to belong to a specific group or style. I often had tons of my different traits in order to uphold a certain image when I was younger. But now, I've noticed the true born being common. My versatile personality is symbolized onto the vibrant colors of a mosaic art piece. Each trait represents a different color. It seemed odd to me at first that I was all these shades of blues, greens, reds, oranges. But when I took a step back to take a good look at myself, I saw that I shined 100 times brighter than the mundane personality that was just one particular color. Every attribute and feature that makes up who I am, whether they are quirks or peculiarities or even specialties, are qualities I'm proud of. Because these various fragments of beautiful hues coalesce to form an alluring image of the mosaic art piece I see in myself. I think that when you're raised up and surrounded by so much love in your family, it's difficult to realize how good you have it until you get older and notice that not everyone is as lucky as you. When I was younger, I was too oblivious, but now I truly appreciate the life I was given for so many reasons. My sister was my first role model. She's two years older than I am. Growing up, I thought that she knew everything about anything. Whatever she did, I wanted to do too. Although today we are two different people, I still consider her one of the most intelligent people in my life. I look up to my dad through his diligence and wisdom. I've noticed that he loves to learn, whether it be something educational or something super relevant. He is like me through our thirst for knowledge and our curiosity to always learn and discover more. My mother grew up in a household where it was believed that women should stay at home and clean and cook. My mother defied those gender roles and ended up working as a successful computer engineer. Growing up, I was always reminded by her that I can be whoever I wanted to be if it was what made me happy. I think her independence and courage is what I look up to most from her. I am so thankful to be raised up by such great influences. I realized pretty early on in my life that it was pretty difficult to be a rock star, president of our country, and end world peace all in one lifetime. Because of this, I began to lack having dreams and motivations. In high school, the scariest question for me is being asked what I wanted to do when I grow up. As a teenager who can't even decide where I want to eat at for dinner, this remark sent chills down my spine. However, I eventually learned that even rock stars who can be labeled as legends or ones who fulfill their lifelong dreams can still be unhappy. I then set a goal for myself, which is that whether I ended up as a millionaire or just living in a small house with 20 cats, all I wanted was to be fully content and happy with who I am. I believe that everyone should have a home away from home. And by that, I mean a place where they feel the most happiest. And going to concerts have given me exactly that. Music has always been a very prominent factor in my life since I was a little girl. And being able to attend a show surrounded by people who feel the same love and passion as I do is truly extraordinary. My best friend is my greatest influence. I met Luke around the beginning of my freshman year and since then we've been inseparable. My favorite thing about him is that he always loves to be happy. It's not because he has an amazing life though. It's just because he chooses to make the most of whatever terrible hardship is thrown at him. It's greatly difficult for me to understand sometimes how he can be so positive despite the struggles he faces. He inspires me because he always has a smile on his face and he always reminds me to appreciate and focus on what I do have and not on what I don't. Luke is also very kind-hearted. He always knows how to help everyone out with their problems and reminds them to stay positive. It always amazes me that he can cheer up my horrible day just by making me smile with a joke. Who you choose to be your best friend is absolutely critical to your character. In my opinion, I believe I've made the right choice. I recovered from being a coward. 
To explain, in cheerleading, I was too scared to throw skills in tumbling and stunting because I feared getting injured. My first year in cheer, I was learning my back handspring and my tumbling coach knew that I could throw the skill by myself, but I just wasn't able to do it mentally. At practice, he made me stand there on the mat and he wouldn't let me leave until I had the courage to throw it. He constantly yelled at me that I was a coward and that I was letting my team down if I couldn't throw the skill, and he made me cry. However, I ended up throwing it by myself because of him. The fact that he never gave up on me and continuously pushed me helped to remind me that even if fear is inevitable and fear can come in the way of success, it does not mean that you should continue to let it be an obstacle. Never let fear be an excuse to be greater. Something that I am really looking into as a career option is working in the field of criminal psychology. I don't think this would be my mother and father's top choice in what they wanted me to do, but when I told them this, they worked hard to support me and help me find an internship for psychology and start taking classes for psychology as well. At the end of the day, they want me to be not only successful, but happy as well. The adult figures in my life help me to realize that my dreams are possible. This year, I was pulled up to the varsity cheer team. I was nervous because the skills I was required to perform were more advanced, and I felt like I was not yet ready for the team. At my first showcase with my new team, I was so frightened of not hitting my stunts and letting my team down. Although we hit it perfectly at practice and backstage, I still was so intimidated. Because of this, I ended up falling or messing up on pretty much every stunt and tumbling pass. After that embarrassment, I told myself I needed to shape up and get it together. I was so angry at myself because I knew that I had the potential to hit that routine perfectly, and I had let my stunt group, my team, and my coach down. I pushed myself harder through each practice. I began to fight for my team and not for myself because that seemed to motivate me a lot more. Eventually, with the next showcase, although I was extremely nervous, I fought for every stunt and pass and hit everything perfectly. Although I made the choice to not continue on with cheerleading, I ended my last year of cheer to learn this important lesson. Making mistakes is completely okay, as long as you choose to learn from them so you can accomplish your goals. I like to say I'm neither a pessimist or an optimist. You see, I tend to call myself a realist. I can be negative when it is realistic to be negative, and positive when it's realistic to be positive. For instance, if someone has been a terrible friend to me in the past, I just assume that they'll continue to treat me that way and think with a negative attitude towards what I believe their future actions will be. In retrospect, I'm not exactly in the best position to be the one to list off valuable skills I've picked up during my 16 year journey in life. I'm young, and like all teenagers who seem to be filled with angst and confusion, I've made countless mistakes and have probably learned from those mistakes half the time. However, something that I'm adamant everyone should know is the power of learning. I always carry with me the reminder that I simply don't and will never know enough. By referring to learning, this value applies to all aspects of my life. Whether it be educational things, such as the elements on the periodic table, or something much more deeper and personal, like finding who I am through family and friends. If we do not have the ability to be educated through the past, our lives would be a periodical chain of dull and monotonous scenes. For instance, the people that have walked in and out of my life have become walking and talking metaphors of lessons and stories to tell. Through friends, I've been given life-changing experiences to learn from, whether it be positive or negative. Life is Can't you see? My parents also teach me values of working hard and independence. What life has given me and what life will give me holds an infinite calculation. Every day you live, no matter what, you will learn something new. Not everything you learn will hold relevance. There are times when the only thing you'll know by the end of the day is how many episodes on Netflix you can binge watch in one sitting, or sometimes the lessons you've learned will be forgotten by the time you wake up in the morning. However, you should realize that you are who you are through learning. Knowing that you aren't perfect and the world holds countless lessons is crucial to living life to its extent. It is easy to believe that what you carry in yourself is all that you will ever learn and every aspiration you have will coincide with the life you will live. But even a young teenager like me whose life has barely even started has grown to understand that in my existence, there will be more experiences, more downfalls, and far larger dreams to achieve in which the current capacity in my mind cannot even begin to think of. Taking what you have, the knowledge that you've accumulated, and evolving it into something tenfold, that's what I truly believe life is about.